Mike Staley Podcast. FF episode 1018. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley at the last place on earth. And today we are going to bring you part two of my into an interview with the band Kinder Jazz from Australia. Also, we will hear from Haley with the Daily Haley, and we will talk to Mike's Daily Podcast, Matt Arudabega, Valentino, Bison Bentley. What a show. Mike's Daily Podcast. So a grand jury has indicted those pro-lifers who made those Planned Parenthood videos that riled up folks on the right. And a new study has come out about zebras and the stripes. They don't do much to hide them, but they make me slightly hyper when I see them on tight pants being worn by women. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's a thing that happens. Zebra stripes. Zebra print. And we got a bit of an insight from the actress writer. Mike's. Lena Dunham. Daily. The media sexist. Podcast. They hate Hillary. Yeah. According to Lena. Don't trust the media. The media is so liberal that it hates Hillary. I'm confused. But Lena Dunham saying, hey, don't believe all the stuff you hear about Hillary. The Apparently, media hates Hillary. And apparently, Twitter is tanking. Uh, they lost a bunch of their executives. And now Leslie Berland is taking over. Good luck, Leslie. Twitter starting to flitter away. And uh, Miley Cyrus is going to be back on television. Well, actually through your Amazon streaming. Amazon streaming winning all these awards. And they're rivaling Netflix. Netflix, hello. And uh, the, uh, the success of streaming online is so big and people are cutting their cords and getting off of the cable TV and all that and turning on to Amazon and Woody Allen is making a TV series the first TV series ever he used to write for like the show of shows for Sid Caesar back in the 60s but now he is actually going to be doing a TV show for Amazon streaming and Miley Cyrus who hasn't been on TV since uh, oh look at his walk in this is Madame Rutabaker. Who is my She She was Hannah Montana. That was the last show she did for the Disney Channel. Now she's going to be working for Woody, making a, a show with him. That should be interesting. Who's Woody? Woody Allen. Oh, if it's not Woody Harrison, I don't care. Ooh. Woody Allen makes these movies. A lot of them are horrible, but some of them are good once in a while. He's insightful and funny. I love Bullets Over Broadway. Bullets Over Broadway makes me laugh. Michael Master, you make me laugh. Put your bald head. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, those all freaking summer, we heard about the Planned Parenthood videos. And oh my gosh, what they're talking about in those videos, it's horrible. And this guy that we have on our... Oh, look who just walked in. Oh, dear, Mike. This is Valentino, the backhand attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, you are referring to something that we don't care about because it happened during the summer, day. Yeah, it was long ago. Back when it was warm. Do you know that? It was... Well, I was just saying that this guy that has a radio show... On this large, yes, very large, so scary large Christian network that I work for. How do I word this without making everyone angry? Well, he, anyway, I I commend this guy, this radio talk show host. His actual day job is he files, he's litigious. He's a lawyer guy and he files lawsuits against Obama constantly. Anything he does that he disagrees with, he files a lawsuit. Now, he gets his money from these radio shows because he, do, he, he does the show like a conservative talk show host. Only he says, we're actually doing something about it. And so he goes after the president 
constantly. And all he did all summer long was talk about those videos, those Planned Parenthood videos. Now, I wonder if he's going to be talking about on the show how a grand jury in Houston has indicted the people that made those videos. So the very ground upon which he stands is shaky. That's all I'm saying. Let's hear it for Kinder Jazz. They're going to be coming on in a little bit. Yeah. This show is all over the place, isn't it? Isn't it fun? And Haley, the Daily Haley, will be on towards the end of the program. So thank you for listening. We are on the website, mikesdailypodcast.com, all the podcast pictures. I believe today I'm standing on a bridge. We'll find out more about that towards the end of the show. Maybe you've seen the picture already. But you can see that at mikesdailypodcast.com, all the past interviews. If you want to help us out and go through the Amazon app that we have at mikesdailypodcast.com that helps us out if you're going to buy anything on amazon go through that link there and if you'd like to donate we're uh there's a paypal thingy and you can become an inglorious mike's daily podcaster if you do that and get a special greeting from all the characters here at cafe anyway michael Matthew, i will not do it you won't do it no only if woody harrelson tells me to oh you're into the woody harrelson yes and lena dunham She's so sassy. Lena Dunham, yes. She says what's on her mind. She does. She's mad because she wants to Hillary to be the president. Ooh. Yeah. I think she does. I think I think there's a lot of Democrats going, well, why isn't Hillary going to become president? What is up with Bernie? Why is he so, so, so successful? Why do people hate Hillary? And then they turn on the TV and there's another mean news story against Hillary. So that's what Lena is saying. Yes, Michael Masu. I understand this. And Woody Harrelson was cute in Cheers. Uh huh. Cheers is a great show. Ooh. Now, would Woody Allen remake Cheers? That would be interesting. Because then he would work, work with Woody Harrelson since Woody Allen is into TV now. Maybe it could just be an Amazon only thing. Hmm. Or maybe a Twitter only thing. Maybe that's what Twitter needs to do is just start showing videos. And Okay, uh, the interview now with the, part two of our three-part interview with Christabel Llewellyn of Kinder Jazz. Into an interview. I'm speaking to Christabel Llewellyn of the band Kinder Jazz. Where did you record the new album? We recorded it at um, a studio in uh, Sydney. And we're literally just, it was live. It was, it was a James Morrison studio. James Morrison's the most amazing trumpet player. Um, he's, he's known worldwide. He's played with everybody. And it was his studio, and this, he's got this amazing um, Yamaha grand piano that's just wonderful. But the studio was amazing. You know, the, the engineers were amazing. We, we were really spoiled. We, we, most of the charts on this, album of first and second takes so you've got that live sound that's quite an undertaking for a big band yes and and really you know we've kept this band going since 1997 that's a feat in itself yeah we absolutely love being together i think it's a it's you know we've grown up almost as a family we know each other's spouses we know each other's children we're encouraging children to sing we're encouraging children to dance we're encouraging children to learn an instrument i i just think if if you know when kids go to school right from kindergarten they should learn to sing and they should learn an instrument it would change the world you have a lot of instrumental songs but then you also have some singing who's doing the singing for you george washing machine is our lead singer and jessica o'donohue ah okay george is a, a very fine violinist um, jazz violinist. He can play pretty much any stringed instrument. Jess is um, a, a vocalist and she actually did an opera degree. Um, but her dad is a jazz guitarist. And so she's got that side to her and it's, it's quite unusual. Tell me about the song Do the Latin Alphabet. Oh, this is, this is a crazy song. Latin, you know, for the beat. It's, it's not Latin as in, in language. Uh, every, th- every piece of music on this album has, has, missed, has a missed first beat. So it's syncopated. 
And oh. kids don't realize, but it's actually teaching them a lot of patience. It's a chance to solo. Every, every instrument in the band gets to solo, and the vocalist solo right at the end with a chicken, you know, making chicken noises. Uh, we're, we're really inspired by Sesame Street. We've been talking to Sesame Street to actually get the band on, on there in New York. Um, it's going to be amazing. Oh. We're, we're just, there's a synergy um, with all, all things Sesame Street because, because of the education value of music. And, and when, when you give children quality, they, they learn from it and they, they're nurtured mm. by it. And I, I think, yeah, we, we just enjoy playing to children. It's not like, you know, playing to adults in a jazz club where they're ch- checking their cell phones, they're talking over you, they're clicking their glasses. Children actually listen with their entire bodies. They're present right in front of you. And, and six months later, they can actually be, you know, um, singing the trombone line in the middle of the piece. They, they don't distinguish melody from harmony when they're really young. They, they take it all in, and it's all important, and it lays down a lot of foundation for their language and all sorts of things. It's so, so important to get your kids involved in quality music. And I think, you know, with, children, with kinder jazz, this is the funnest way to do it. You know, you don't have to do anything. You just have to spin the disc or, the, you know, the CDs are just a small sample of what happens live. Yeah. It really is best to take your kids to live music. You don't have to take them to kinder jazz. You, have, you, you know, take them to a symphony orchestra or something big. And, and it just changes them forever. Do the Latin Alphabet is with Samson Highland, a 10-year-old, who's the son of... Simon Highland, who sometimes sings with us when George is not around. And Simon used to be, he, he's a tap dancer. He, he's, you know, he's like one of the tap dogs. He's just amazing. But his, his, his three kids are very talented. And Samson's his young, oldest one. He's just actually got the lead in the Sound of Music on the equivalent of our Broadway. Wow. Um, and he's, he's, this is his debut with Kinder Jazz. It's 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 just great to be able to share, you know, with with your with children and um, music's got this amazing ability to not care about your age, you know. Mm-hmm. But we we just care about the quality. Can you do it? <laughs> Can you play? It? What's up next for Kinder Jazz? Are you working on anything? We we we've we've just finished writing our next album, and that'll that'll take a bit of playing in before we go into the studio. What I'd like to do is actually record it as a radio show, a little bit of, you know, or as a, as a DVD. So it's a, it's a visual as well as auditory and all of that and, and, and have a lot of humor in it. What we, we try and do something different every CD. One, one year we combined um, a tuba, classical tuba player, with our Latin percussionist, Ico Akrius. He plays the congas, and, he, and Ica doesn't read. He's, he's intuitive in, in his playing, which makes him mag- absolutely magnificent. And to put him in, in a studio with a tuba player who's totally classical and doesn't improvise, and the two had to communicate, and, and the result is just you know, mind-boggling. It's, it's so good. It, it sends shivers up my spine every time I hear it. And one one year we, we did a trombone choir. Trombones have got such an amazing um, range, and it's almost like a voice. And, and mm. so we, there were six trombones in this choir, and, the, and they play um, instrumental songs. It's just really, really beautiful sound. And so, so we're just you know, creating an environment of different sounds and different auditory experiences for children to, to really in, you know, develop their, their listening ability. And, and what parent doesn't want their child to listen? And you grew up in Australia. I hear the music scene. Like... Yes, we've got the Sydney Festival on at the moment, and it's our summer festival, so it's a whole month long of live. You know, Sydney Harbour is just gorgeous, and um, we've got live music everywhere. And that's very exciting. There are lots and lots of tourists, and but Sydney siders go out all the time because you know it's got the perfect weather. Sydney's um, produced a lot of rock bands. You know, ACDC. I remember seeing in the 70s. There, there are so many rock bands that, that um, the Bee Gees. 
Oh yeah. Um, started in Sydney. All that, all that disco stuff. You know, we we. I just loved going out and dancing all night. It was, <laughs> you know, it's the best thing. <laughs> wow. People are so you know, they they've lost their rhythm. It's. You know, spontaneity it happens to be a human right. You know, you just ask anyone who, who suddenly gets ill and has to go to hospital, everything has to work like clockwork. You know, all their, um, everything has to be in routine. There's, there's no spontaneity. Mm. And, and music gives you that human right of just being in the moment and enjoying yourself. Music breaks that monotony. And it's just, you know, the best thing to introduce your children to because they've got that for life. You know, they're never going to be bored. And kids' you know, brains are growing. They don't want to be bored. Where can they find Kinder Jazz on the internet? Kinder Jazz has a website um, called kinderjazz.com, K I N D E R J A Z Z.com. We're on Amazon, on CD Baby, on iTunes, on Spotify. You know, we're on about 40 odd downloadable sites. If you want a physical CD, you can go to our website or CD Baby. Um, they, they all do both digital and downloads and, and physical CDs. Kinder Jazz, as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. And here's today's podcast picture. And the podcast picture is of me on the Golden Gate Bridge back when I had a goatee. Isn't that exciting? Oh, look what it is. It's Haley stopping by. The Daily Haley. The Almost Daily Haley. He lied to us, that guy, that president guy back yeah, then. We were discussing the all the... All the precedents that said, uh, I did not have relations. Can you imagine uh, if Elvis was president? That's what Bill Clinton was. He was Elvis. I did not have relations. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. what happened. Now you just run off home. <laughs> you run off home, pretty baby. Just run off, pretty baby. Run off home right now. Run off home, pretty baby, and you won't get the cow chasing after you. Ladies and gentlemen of this nation, I would like to turn your attention to a very important issue plaguing America. In the ghetto. (laughs) (laughs) You know, a lot of things happen that are bad in the world today, like drugs, because drugs are bad, okay? And that happens in the ghetto. In the ghetto. Sometimes when I'm talking and I realize that I'm really fat because now I'm old Elvis and I've I'm eaten. I'm old a, Elvis. I'm old Elvis and I got 300 pounds. And sometimes I realize that I got to go down to the donut shop that's in the ghetto. In the ghetto. Get me a donut. In the ghetto. In the ghetto. <sighs> I listened to that song the other day in the ghetto. It's and an interesting song. It's very sad. Because another baby is born in the ghetto. I decided today's going to be a sad song podcast. Oh, okay. No, I can't take one more. Sorry, Actually, do like- no, I don't. I mean, okay, so she's a singer songwriter. I always appreciate singer songwriters. But that song is so sad. Da, 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 da. Now you Mike Matthews, you're so handsome. All right, next sad song. <laughs> that was Christina Perry. I prefer the Katy Perry to the Christina Perry. They're... Just going through all the stereotypical sad songs. Go 
Oh, Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. I wrote a really depressing song. Do you know, actually, I saw her for my bachelor party. Really? <laughs> yeah. My ex-brother-in-law took me to see her at the SAP Center back when it was the HP Pavilion. And uh, the, she performed. But I was really happy because playing with her was a girl named Butterfly Boucher that I was a huge fan of. Nobody knows her in the, uh, in the Stites. But she had a song called Another White Dash. Now, I don't know that one. It's just stereotypically sad. You're supposed oh. to be sad right now. <laughs> I, I want to make some chili and chips. <laughs> oh, yeah, this was the song that was playing in the background of that. Yeah. If you, when you're making chili and chips, you got to make sure that you put a, put a chip inside the chili. And then you're... That was some happy music. <laughs> this is wrong. Whoa, what is Zappo li Zapco lick? I don't know. What is Zapco What is that lick? language? Is that Polish? Are those afros? Why do they have afros? Oh, was We're watching an advertisement in front of the video, by the way. What website did you get to? I don't know. I've never seen this before. Zap Kolek. Let's see. I'm assuming that me that's skipping the ad, or I've just downloaded a horrible virus. I love that intro. That's pretty cool. So That's Butterfly Voucher. I wanted to see her, and she was opening for Sarah McLachlan. McLachlan. Ten years ago. It's funny how you find you find bands that open for other people that are way bigger, and they're just like, this is so good. I love yeah. it. Yeah. But she didn't quite get successful here. Same with the band Kitten, who I saw open for um, uh, Paramore. Kitten? Kitten. And they sounded a lot different live than they did on their albums, but it was both really good. What's their song? Is it the 10 Cutest Kittens on YouTube? Cut it out. That's that's not, I'm not telling you to cut it out, but also you should stop. But um, the song is called Cut It Out. Cut it out. I don't know if they have a video. Hey, do you know anything about, is that them? Uh, sure. Here, let me... Do this, and do that, and do all this other stuff that the listener doesn't care about. That's true. Do you care about it, listener? No, of course you don't. Is, it, is this them? Yeah. Ooh, I like that drum beat. Ooh, I like that. I always like a synth syncopated synthesizer bass note. That is not the lead singer. That is an actor. This is my new favorite band. It's pretty good. I'll let you do that. Kinder Jazz needs to cover this band. <laughs> Kinder Jazz was on the show today. I didn't. I didn't listen. You weren't here for that part. Kinder Jazz. I brought, this part was recorded years later after the interview. In the ruins of civilization. <laughs> That's why it's the last place on earth. <laughs> That's right. That's why we say the last place on earth. Oh, you just missed the chorus. I I I, I took it out for a second because I didn't want YouTube to ding me. I'm playing around the YouTube uh, music sensor. Oh. Leave the lights on. So I can't see you? Is that what she's saying? You're all I see. Oh. I like this. Now, don't. I like that a lot. Thank you, Haley, for turning us on to some new music. The Kittens, for all you people. It's not The Kittens. It is Kitten. A the, single kitten. I love... So what was that other band that people used to go, it's The Somethings, and you're like, no, 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 no. It's just blah. What was it? Shoot. It's definitely... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Blah. 
Uh, it'll come to us later. Mm-hmm. Beatles. It's not the Beatles. It's just Beatles. It's the Beatles. <laughs> See, whenever anyone says the Beatles, I just picture, you know, like the Ed Sullivan, the Beatles. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. And then when I say that, I think of Kermit the Frog. Yeah, because you look like Kermit the Frog when you do that. Who would who would be like, and now for our special guest. I can't do a good Kermit the Frog impersonation. He's more in the back of the... Wait, no, that's now, Brewmaster. Yeah. Uh, Hi-ho. Hi-ho. Kermit, Kermit the happy. Frog here. What are you doing, Miss Piggy? Yeah. And then he'd go, you know, Linda Rodstad. <laughs> he was always so happy because Linda Ran- Ronstadt was on. Yeah. Or John Denver. Linda Rodstad had a really, really good version of Blue Bayou on the Muppet Show. Yeah. And I'm sure it was pre recorded and then just played over that, but um, I don't know if it was. I have to I don't see know that. If, I don't know if they played like. A, v- a version that had been previously recorded or if it was the version they did only for the Muppet show but it was rocking and I do like that song anyway so uh that was uh who did that originally Blue Bayou I don't know who did Linda Rostad's song <laughs> <laughs> We're still stuck on Lit Lady Annabellum. <laughs> Good old Haley figured out how to play that part of Lady Annabellum's song. You've been going to spare the beauty, Linda Ronstadt, Because she was jealous of Linda Rodstadt. I love she is singing this live. Ribbit. And the and the riveting is awesome. <laughs> Why don't you enjoy that while I make sure Carlton Healy's playing? <laughs> Hey, I switched microphones. I'm over here on Mike's microphone. Wow, my levels are so much better in this microphone. Oh, you're holding out on me, Mike. Anyway. I'm going to pause that so we don't get dinged by YouTube. That's the goal of this show is to not get dinged by YouTube, basically. (laughs) Hey, I've taken over the show. Oh, by the way, my headphones suck over there. What mic are you on? I was on the yellow-orange one. Okay. Hey, this is Haley. I'm over here now, and I'm. I feel like I've been sucked into some horrible podcast. Yeah, now you know how I feel. <laughs> this is nice over here. I see. Why, I see why you do this. You like that? Isn't it oh. weird to be on that side? No, it's not. I've been on this side before. Just never exactly on Mike on this side. Wow, I feel like I'm on the Haley show. I paused it so we get, it wouldn't get digged by you, dude. Oh, thank you. Don't you love the uh, the old disco drum that they kind of use sparingly in the song? Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> oh, Linda Ronstadt. Let me skip ahead to the part with all the croaking. You know she dated Jerry Brown for a while. They were going to be the next big married couple of politics. You can just there, there are Muppet frogs around in various places, and they're just most of them don't have straight eyes. They had just these crooked, yeah, weird-eyed frogs, and they're just staring directly into the camera as best as they can and croaking. I'm gonna say something that's gonna horribly offend you right now. Linda Ronstadt totally reminds me of Lena Dunham. I can see it. Do you see it? I see it. It's the round. It's the round face. They both yeah. have very kind of rounded features. I could see Lena Dunham if she could sing singing Linda Ronstadt songs. Maybe, yeah. But she, Lena Dunham was in the news because she's getting really mad at the media for uh, the sexist coverage of Hillary Clinton. Of Hillary Clinton. Wow, you've mastered the control of that video player. Where did you learn video player playing? Uh, did you learn that in school? 
Wow, that video player lets you have a lot of control. Listen to him. Working that keyboard. I'm hacking. <laughs> He's hacking away, everybody. You're such a hacker. Sorry if your keyboard doesn't work. <laughs> You've destroyed my keyboard outside of Cafe Anyway here at the last place on Earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Man, we need to end this before we go too far. Any last thoughts, Haley? <laughs> Okay, wait, wait, wait. What's something you would say? I would say, let's see. What would something? I cannot. I am not able to channel you right now. Can you Chanel me? (laughs) Chanel. You did the French version of channel. Chanel number five. Chanel number five. What's something you would say right now? Exclusive. Oh, you would say something very, like... Something I wouldn't know And I would be like What are you talking about there Is what would happen Hey what are you talking about there I'm from Minnesota We don't know these types of things Okay go on Keep going the Minnesota accent Um, I'm not very good in a Minnesota accent No you'd be like So we'd say something about rednecks And you'd, you'd be like well, one time well, when I was in my shack and I was playing my banjo. My banjo and my jug. And my jug. You take the jug and you put your lip here like it was your cousin and you go. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. You better be enjoying this podcast, listener, because this is good stuff. Good incest jokes. Well, actually, is making out with your cousin... Yes. Is it really? Yes. Well, I mean, what if she's like a third removed? Yes. It can be argued in various states. No, I agree with you, but I mean, that's weird. But it is weird, too, when you have hot cousins. I don't. I don't. Oops, sorry about that, Anne Katrine. <laughs> but yeah, she's she's uh, a I just cousin. M- I just met one of my cousins on uh, on Sunday for the first time. Get the heck out! Yeah, you have such a huge family. I love because Kevin was talking about his huge family on Addendum with Kevin. I don't have that big of a family, but I have more of a family than I realize. They're kind of scattered around the country. Uh-huh. Like, uh, the guy who I met on Sunday, his name was Francis, and he, his father, who's my uncle... Your, your, bro- your father's brother? No, my mother's brother. Your mother's brother? He lives in... He did live in Nashville, because he has a musical career. Really? Yes, he does. Christian music and whatnot. What the heck? I know. What a family of talented people. Um, and like, I, I only I met him last year. Uh huh. I met my uncle last year. That's kind of like he's always been on that side of the country. Wow. So that was pretty crazy. And you finally met him at twenty-one or something. Mm-hmm. And and is is he Italian? So that's all. You're all Italians? No. He's Portuguese? None of us are Italian. You're not Italian? My dad's Italian. Oh. My dad's Italian. His dad was Italian. His dad was Italian. Oh, okay. As far as I know, that's all the Italian we have in our family. I see. That's why I have an Italian.